Comedian Marcus Brigstock reveals he was addicted to pornography. Comedian Marcus Brigstock has revealed he became addicted to pornography and received help to overcome the issue. The TV star discussed the issue on the Hidden 20% podcast, saying he became addicted after he had an affair which led to the end of his first marriage. Brigstock is now married to comedian Rachel Paris and the couple host a podcast called How Is It For You? Brigstock, who has regularly been a panelist on Have I Got News For You and featured in the film Love Actually, said the shame from his affair led to a lot of very dysfunctional behavior. He told the podcast, I'd stayed sober from drugs, alcohol, and my compulsive eating disorder, but I had become addicted to porn. I really had no idea that I was addicted to it. I sort of thought I looked at a normal amount of porn. Well, the normal amount of porn today is not like a normal amount of porn before the internet. Brigstock, 51 years old, told host Ben Branson that most porn addicts were addicted from about the age of 11, saying it profoundly alters your brain chemistry. There are so many people with different depths of addiction to porn and to online social media, he added. But porn is the most toxic. The comedian said he would watch porn all night, for the entire night, before he received help to end his addiction. TikTok founder Zhang Yiming becomes China's richest man. TikTok's founder Zhang Yiming has become China's richest man with a fortune of almost $50 billion. Dubbed the short video king, the 41-year-old topped the Huruan China rich list for the first time with $49.3 billion. Mr. Yiming stepped down as chief executive of ByteDance, TikTok's parent company, in 2021. He is the 18th individual to be crowned China's richest person in the 26 years since the Huruan China rich list began. He dethroned bottled water magnate Zhong Shanshan, who slipped to second place as his fortune dropped 24% to $47.9 billion. A number of the billionaires on the list saw their fortunes plummet over the past year with difficult economic conditions in China. This comes during a legal battle over ByteDance U.S. assets as TikTok could be banned in the U.S. next year unless its parent company goes through with a sale amid accusations it is giving data to the Chinese government, something it denies. Legislation was passed by the House of Representatives earlier this year. If the bill becomes law, the owner of the popular video sharing app will have nine months to find a buyer, with a possible three-month extension while a sale is in progress, or face a ban. The FBI has warned that ByteDance could share user data, such as browsing history, location, and biometric identifiers, with China's authoritarian government. TikTok has said it has never done that and would not do so if asked. Despite the battle, ByteDance global revenue grew 30% last year, and Mr. Yiming still has a stake in it, helping propel his personal fortune. Kanye West and Adidas reach settlement after years of lawsuits. Adidas has reached an out-of-court settlement with Kanye West, known as Ye ending all legal proceedings between them, the sportswear brand has said. Adidas and West have been embroiled in multiple lawsuits for the past two years after the German manufacturer ended a partnership with the rapper over anti-Semitic comments he made in 2022. A mountain of West's popular brand of Yeezy trainers were left unsold after the partnership ended. Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden said, There isn't any more open issues, and there is no money going either way, and we both move on. There were tensions on many issues, he added. When you put the claims on the right side and you put the claims on the left side, both parties said we don't need to fight anymore and withdrew all the claims. He declined to give further details of the deal. Yeezy trainers had been a big hit for the company and were much sought after on the used market, routinely selling for hundreds of pounds. Last year, Adidas confirmed some proceeds from the sale of Yeezy stock, which was initially in high demand but more recently selling at a discount would be given to charity. 
Organizations including the Anti-Defamation League, the Philonize and Keto Floyd Institute for Social Change and Robert Kraft's Foundation to Combat Anti-Semitism were named as beneficiaries. When announcing it as cutting ties with West, the company said, Yes, recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful and dangerous, and they violate the company's values of diversity and inclusion, mutual respect and fairness. It came after the 47-year-old said he was going to go to death con 3 on Jewish people and suggested slavery was a choice. At the time, West was also criticized by his ex-wife Kim Kardashian who said hate speech is never okay or excusable. <coughs> Thousand of stolen bluey coins found. More than 40,000 stolen coins based on the hit children's TV show Bluey have been recovered by police in Australia. New South Wales police said officers searched a self-storage facility in Wentworthville and found a haul of Royal Australian Mint bags containing the cartoon currency. Earlier this year, the Mint produced coins featuring characters from the animated program worth one Australian dollar. They are considered legal tender. On July 12th, Police said 63,000 of the limited edition coins had been stolen from a warehouse in Wetherill Park, New South Wales, months before they were due to enter circulation. Known as Bluey Dollar Bucks, they have been sold for as much as 10 times their face value online, and one eBay seller offered a pack of three for almost 600 Australian dollars. In total, 40,061 of the stolen coins were recovered by Strike Force Bandit, a police unit investigating the theft named after Bluey's dad in the show on Tuesday. Officers also said they seized power tools, clothing items, and bags from the storage facility, which they said are all believed to have been stolen. So far, three people have been charged for their alleged involvement in the July warehouse robbery. Now one of the most popular shows in the world, Bluey first premiered in Australia in 2018 and began streaming in the UK on Disney Plus in 2020. In April, a producer on the show reassured fans there will be more episodes of Bluey after a cryptic season ending left parents worried the show would be cancelled. Sam Moore told BBC Radio 4's Today program at the time, it's just the question that's on everyone's lips no it's not the end for Bluey, I'm sure we've got many more surprises in store for you. Russia finds Google more than world's entire GDP for blocking YouTube accounts. Google has reportedly racked up a fine of more than two undecillion rubles, two followed by 36 zeros, after it removed state-run and pro-government accounts from YouTube. Put another way, an undecillion is a trillion times a trillion times a trillion. The fine is far greater than the world's total GDP, estimated at $110 trillion by the International Monetary Fund. Google, which owns YouTube, has a current stock market value of $2.16 trillion, so probably won't be stumping up the cash anytime soon. The fine is also still growing due to non-payment and, if not paid within nine months, will start to double every day, reported state news agency TASS. The mind-boggling amount has grown because Google hasn't restored YouTube accounts belonging to 17 Russian TV channels, according to Russia's RBC News. It claims a judge in the case said at a hearing on October 28 that he was considering a case in which there are many, many zeros. Google can reportedly only return to the Russian market if it complies with the court decision. The case was first filed privately in 2020 after the accounts of the Tsargrad TV channel and RIA fan were blocked due to US sanctions laws, reported RBC. It then escalated after the start of the Ukraine war when YouTube blocked accounts belonging to the likes of Sputnik and RT after which Russian authorities got involved. <laughs> Dozens of stolen supercars smuggled abroad are returned to UK. 30 supercars stolen and illegally exported to Thailand have been returned to the UK after an eight-year investigation. A total of 35 high-end vehicles, including Range Rovers, 
Porsches, Mercedes, BMWs, and Lamborghinis were taken, with a combined value of $8.38 million, according to the National Vehicle Crime Intelligence Service NACVIS. They were obtained fraudulently on finance contracts from car dealerships across England in 2016 and 2017 before being shipped to Thailand, the agency said. After an eight-year investigation led by NACVIS, with the help of the Met Police, National Crime Agency, and the British and Thai embassies, multiple arrest warrants were executed and 30 of the cars were tracked down and seized in Bangkok. The vehicles have now arrived back in the UK through the port of Southampton and are being stored in a warehouse nearby before being returned to their original dealerships. Sharon Naughton, head of NAS CVIS, said the organization will not rest until every avenue of investigation has been exhausted. There is no time limit on our efforts to disrupt criminality and return proceeds obtained through illegal means. Jenny Sims, the National Police Chief's counsel lead for vehicle crime, said the offenses have a huge impact on victims. The tireless work involved in this investigation reflects how seriously we take our role in tackling it, she added. Thirteen people have now been charged as a result of the investigation, the National Crime Agency said.